Miles thinks the garages would be better over here where we're going to clear the graveyard. Oh, I think it'll be better where it was. The children will need this for a play area. A letter just came for you, Tracy. Oh, it's from Pam. Dear Mommy and Daddy, I hope you're well. Well, they've taken her to Montreal for the tennis tournament. Hey, Bill, listen to this. Marge Campbell beat Hilda in straight sets for the cup. You could have beaten both of them. At the same time, I suppose, one hand tied behind your back. Well, my daughter still thinks I'm champ. So do I. I've got the scars to prove it. Hey, what else did she say? School will be out in six weeks. I have already packed my things, which everybody thinks is a big joke. She writes a very good letter for her age. Oh, I do hope she likes it here. Oh, I know she will. Oh, Tracy's crazy about it, aren't you, honey? Mm. Well, let's have our tea. Where's Todd? Always having trouble with his car again. Oh. Todd! Tea! No, thanks. Stay here. Todd? I'll see who it is. Are you expecting someone? Todd probably locked himself out again. I want to see William Lanier. It's Morgan Whitlock. Oh, Out of my way, no. woman. This time you overreached yourself. This time I'm taking you to court. If there's any justice, they'll send you packing back where you came from. We've been to court and you know the decision. Yes, but you're bulldozer. Look, Mr. Whitlock, you knew we were starting to grade this morning. You've had months to move your markers like everyone else. I've even offered you trucks and labor so you'll have no expense. The Whitlocks have used that cemetery for 800 years. What right does an upstart like you have to run sewers through their coffins, put buildings over their graves? Well, we've been through this a dozen times already. That cemetery is full and abandoned. No one's been buried there for 150 years. Look, I, I didn't want to disturb a cemetery, but well, it's right in the middle of the tract, and if this area is going to progress... Progress? What do you mean? Is progress smashing our gravestones with your damn bulldozer? That's not true. The grading started on clear ground. Is that so, Mr. Lanier? Have you taken the trouble to look at your handiwork today? Have you talked to that brute forester, your partner? Are you telling me that the bulldozer damaged some of your gravestones? I'm telling you that the bulldozer ran right through the middle of the Whitlock plot. And when we tried to stop it, it ran us down. If this is true, Mr. Whitlock, I want you to know it was against my orders. You're not the sort of man I can believe. But I'm going to stop you. I'm not going to let you ruin our countryside with... Uh, with trash like this! <laughs> Let me talk to your Uncle Amy. I know I can make him understand. It's no use, Todd. I've tried to talk to him so many times. Then meet me tonight, anyway. I can't tonight. I told you why. Oh, Todd. As soon as this is over, it'll be just like before. Won't that be wonderful? Sneaking about just like before. I told you not to come near my niece. Mr. Whitlock. There'll be no argument. You're not to see Amy, is that clear? I've got to talk to you. There'll be no more talk. Delaney's. I told him the truth. I didn't know anything about it. It's Forrester's fault, not yours. Well, that's why. Better get over there and get him to pull his men off. I wish you could handle the development on your own, Bill. Like in Toronto and Detroit. Well, there I had a contracting business, equipment and financial backing. Here I need a partner to supply them. I wish you could have chosen a better partner than Miles Forrester. Mr. Forrester. What is it? Mr. Lanny is here to see you. Oh, send him in. Send him in. Come in, Bill. There won't be a moment here. Fix yourself a drink. No, thanks. How did the trip to London go? Oh, I'm dead beat. Left at six this morning and drove both ways. 
But the bank did us proud, Bill. Yes, I thought they would. Plain sailing from here. I've got the tractors in to start grading. That's what I came to see you about. Huh? Do you know they've ploughed up some of the Whitlock gravestones? Have they now? You don't seem very surprised. Well, no. As a matter of fact, I told them to. You t Have you gone out of your mind? Why? We have a lot of money up. Interest to pay. Dates to meet. You promised me the grading will start on cleared ground. And then what? Stop. Wait. Invest a few more thousand pounds. We had an agreement. Now, look, Bill. They've had all the warning in the world. Everyone's moved their tombs but the Whitlocks. <laughs> Let's face it, man. They hate the Lanyons. They'll do anything they can to stop you. Now, this is a big project. You're going to make a lot of money. We can still make money without desecrating a cemetery. You know, you old families are all the same, living in the past, going broke on thousands of pounds worth of real estate. But the city is moving towards your acreage. And still, your father shot himself because of financial worries. My father happened to be a man of principle, something that you probably find very difficult to understand. Well, I'm sure he was right by his own lights, but times are changing. Cities are expanding. I know all about the population explosion. <laughs> now, look, Bill, I'll tell you what we'll do. No, I'll tell you. It's past quitting time now, so there's nothing we can do tonight. But tomorrow morning, you're going to have all that equipment transferred to clear ground. And you're going to supply me with all the trucks and labour I need to move the Whitlock memorials. And I'm going to see the job gets done. That all right, Miles? Right as rain. Anything I can do. I'll be the first to call on you. Good night, Miles. Good night, Bill.
How does it go? Is everything all right? Well, not all right, but I think we can straighten it out. What have you got there? Oh, I found it in the cemetery. They're both the same. Yeah. I think I'll go up and have a talk to Grandmother before dinner. Oh, well, don't be long, will you, Bill? Todd and Helen will need a drink when they get in. Oh, take over for me, will you? You're not only the best backhand in Canada, you're a great bartender, too. The flattery I get when you want something. It's the same as the stone in the fireplace. That stone in the fireplace was put there when the Whitlocks owned the place. The only other one was on Vanessa Whitlock's grave. I seem to remember being told as a child that this was the sign of a witch's circle. It is. What was it doing on the grave? Our ancestors said that Vanessa Whitlock was a witch. They accused her and she was condemned. What do you think? That's the witch's circle. The pact with the devil. Well, if she was burnt as a witch, she can't harm anyone now. She wasn't burned. After she was condemned, they took her out and buried her alive. drink, all right? No. Oh, where's that piece of stone you showed me? I was telling them about it. Oh, I left it upstairs. What did you show her? A piece of the witch's tombstone. And you disturbed it. I was pretty disturbed already. I just wanted to compare it with that. Are you talking about real witches with broomsticks and cats? Well, I don't know about the broomsticks and cats. Friday will be May Eve. Rude mass. Then you'll see for yourself. Let's change the subject. Well, I've never heard of rude Mars. Well, it's supposed to be one of the four great Sabbaths of the year when the witches gather. Candlemas, Rudemus, Beltane in Midsummer, and Halloween. The night the witches make their sacrifice to the devil. Well, I can hardly wait for Friday. I gather Bill hasn't told you what kind of a family you've married into. Oh, knock it off, Todd. Oh, no, I'm really interested. What kind of a family have I married into? What harm will it do? Well, you started it. You better finish it. The Laniers are Norman stock. Latecomers. 
The Whitlocks were Anglo-Saxon. Originally, they owned all this land, this house. The story goes that in the early 1600s, during the witch hunts, the Laniers accused the Whitlocks of witchcraft. There have been cynics who felt that their zeal was inspired more by greed than righteousness. But anyway, they had Vanessa Whitlock killed and drove out her kinfolk. Then they took over. Well, naturally, the Whitlocks didn't take very kindly to this. And ever since then, they're supposed to have made the destruction of the Laniers the main item of business at their Sabbaths. Is Miles Forster in his office? Uh, well, yes, Mr. Whitlock. You tell him that I want to see him now. What is it? Mr. Whitlock wants to see you. What, at this time of the night? You should have been home hours ago. Well, I thought you wanted those estimates to go after the council. Oh, uh, tomorrow will do. You've had enough for today. And so have I. All I want is a hot bath and then bed. Well, what am I to tell Mr. Whitlock? I'll tell him to go to blazes, if you like. <laughs> oh, he's Lanier's problem now. Just get rid of him. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Whitlock. Mr. Forrester's very tired. I insist upon seeing him. I'm sorry. He's had a long day and he's going home. Well, he'll not be rid of me that easy. He says you should see Mr. Lanier if there's anything to discuss. Lanier! You warn Forrester from me that he's going to be sorry. He's going to regret this day. Rejecting these, make a note, will you? New bids on door hardware. What about the metal casements? I'll answer it. The metal casements? Oh, I don't think we're asked for bids. Uh, I think we'd be better off to negotiate or let the subs handle it. This is Detective Inspector Baldwin. My husband, William Lanier. How do you do? He's just rather tired. Hello. I don't believe we've met, Inspector. I'm Helen Lanier. Oh, uh, Inspector Sheldon's on sick leave, ma'am. I was sent down to fill in for him. Oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid I have some very shocking news for you. Miles Forrester is dead. Dead? I just saw him last night. He was drowned, Mr. Lanier, in his bathtub. And we think it was murder. Oh, no. Well, death was caused by drowning, all right, but, well, there are marks on his throat as if somebody had tried to strangle him. We are holding Morgan Whitlock. For murder? No charges have been filed yet, sir, but Whitlock went to see Forrester last night and behaved in a very threatening manner. And he's unable to account for his movements at the time of the death. What about Amy? The niece? Oh, she's at home now. I drove her there myself. Just a moment, young man. Where were you last night? He was with us. None of us left the house. Oh, I see. So you can all vouch for each other, then. Was there anybody else in the house last night? Just my grandmother, Marvina Lanier. Do you think I might speak to her just for a moment? That won't be necessary, Inspector. My mother hasn't left her room since my father died. Many years ago. It was a great shock to her. 
She hasn't walked since. I see. Inspector, it's for you. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, will you? Hello, Baldwin speaking. I'm going over to see Amy. No, Todd, I don't Bill. think it's the time. She's by herself. Yes, all right, go ahead. All right, now stay there. Don't touch anything. I'll be right over. It was my assistant, Sergeant Kenley. Something very odd's happened at the cemetery. I wonder if you'd mind going down there with me, sir. Me? What can... All right, yes, if you think I can help. Good. Oh, yes, by the way. Where did you get that? This? We found it pinned to a window curtain in Forrester's office. It's a witch's charm. I heard. I wasn't sure. Why, Amy? Well, your brother and Mr. Forrester being partners and, and uncle being accused. I love you. That's the only thing that matters. <sighs> How's your uncle taking it? He's more angry than anything else. He's going to be all right. They're just checking on everyone that knew Forrester. They questioned all of us this morning. They even asked about my grandmother. The inspector said they're holding your uncle because he was at Forrester's last night. But they haven't filed charges against him. He told us that. Oh, I hope so. I don't know what I'd do. Just don't worry. They'll have to release him. It won't be long. In the meantime, you can't stay here on your own. You're coming to stay at our house. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? You know how uncle feels. I don't think he'd want you to be here alone. He'd never forgive me if I stayed with the Lanius. Don't ask me, Todd. I suppose they hold him for some days. I don't know. Todd. I'm frightened. I wish you and I could be a thousand miles away from Uncle and this feud. And... And what? And everything. Miss Lanya, I'm sorry to trouble you, but... Amy! Hello? Come in. Come in. I'm glad you changed your mind. Oh, Tracy! This is Amy Whitlock, my sister-in-law, Tracy. Hello. Todd's told me a lot about you. How do you do, Mrs. Lanya? Amy's on her own. I said if she felt lonely, she was to stay with us. Oh, of course. I feel like a terrible nuisance. <laughs> We've plenty of room. <gasps> Come on. I'll take you upstairs. Don't be long now. Who was that? Todd invited the Whitlock girl to stay with us. Do you think that was a good idea? Why not? She was by herself. Where is she now? Tracy took her upstairs. A Whitlock hasn't slept in this house for 300 years. Then it's about time one did. Just to put a stop to this nonsense. Nonsense? You know the Whitlocks still belong to the old religion. I know there have always been stories about witchcraft and certain practices, yes. There's a coven right here. It's common knowledge. Are you trying to tell us that Amy's a witch? I am only trying to say that there's a coven of 13 here and that the Whitlocks belong to it. Bill, this is absolutely idiotic. Look, Helen, the girl's upstairs now. There's not much we can do about it until tomorrow, is it? 
You do as you like. You're head of the house now. But in the morning, I'm driving up to London to stay with friends. You're coming to bed right now. Helen, what is it? I saw it. You saw what, Helen? I saw it. Get the dressing gown. Come on, Helen. Come and sit down. You'll be all right. Uh -huh. I saw it. Come on, put this on, Kippy. <laughs> Sit down. Now, Helen, what did you see? It's that girl. I warned you. Do you mean Amy? She's in bed. No. I'll go and see. She's in bed asleep. Oh, Helen, do you feel better? Can you tell us, what frightened you? Well, there was a woman in grey. She was standing beside my bed. There was mud on her clothes. She was going to kill me. Oh, Helen, Tracy and I were out in the hall, and no one came out of your room. And you saw there was no one here when we switched the lights on. Oh, don't tell me I dreamt it. I saw her as plainly as I see you. She came from there. There's nothing.
Go. I had no idea she'd left until I saw that her car was gone. Where did she go? What happened last night? After Helen went to bed, she, um, she thought she saw something in her room. So what in her room? Oh, I don't know. She said it was a, a woman in grey. With clay on her clothes. How did you know that? Bill, you must go after her at once. She's in great danger. Oh, you go on ahead. I'll be up in a minute. I'm uh, sorry to intrude, Mr. Lanier. I thought you wanted air. They're releasing Morgan Whitlock. Uh, thank you. When? Tonight or tomorrow morning. No evidence? We're baffled. Forrester was a powerful man, Mr. Lanier. How could anybody have just walked into his bathroom and strangled him without any sort of a fight? Doesn't make sense. Uh, neither does the death of my Aunt Helen. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Oh, come on, Inspector. You know it wasn't an accident. Nobody leaves the main highway and drives 200 yards across a rubbish tip for an accident. Oh, it wasn't suicide. You can take my word for that. It wasn't murder either, Mr. Lanier. You can take my word for that. We examined those tracks very carefully. There were no suspicious marks on the cliff top. 
That car was driven at an even pace across that rubbish tip and straight over the cliff. It never stopped. What's your explanation? You name it. I wish I'd never started this construction project. Come in. Well, look, Tracy, what are you doing up? Todd told me he and your husband are driving up to London this afternoon. I want to see him off. Oh, you should be in bed. Well, it was only flu or something. <laughs> You'll start thinking I'm an invalid. Well, all right. But be sure you're warm enough. Tell him I'll be down in a minute. You really ought to take her home now, you know, Todd. But she isn't well enough. She's had this fever for two days. Well, she can't stay here once they release her uncle. I'm not having him storming around the place, upsetting Tracy while we're away. Oh, I can handle him, Bill. Besides, Amy can keep me company when you're in London. Are you sure you wouldn't rather we drove up tomorrow or um, postpone the meeting? Of course not. This development's important. What time are you seeing the bank? Ten o'clock. We should be back before evening. You're worried about something. What is it? Oh, it's just that I don't like leaving you here alone right after the funeral. Oh, Bill, you know me better than that. I'm not the fanciful type. <sighs> Nothing. You know, I'm worried about you. You and Todd are both very tired. Be careful when you're driving, won't you? Yes, I'll drive the first half while Todd has a sleep and he can take over. Yeah, I'll carry my bag. Are you all right? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Amy, I... I don't like to interfere, but... You have to go back to your uncle. Couldn't you stay with us? Please, don't ask me that. Don't make it any harder. Harder? Why? I must do what uncle says. He's... Well? I must obey him. an explanation. There isn't. I was wide awake and I saw the road in front of me the whole time. Maybe it was some sort of auto-suggestion. You were thinking about Helen's accident and turned off at the same place. I was thinking about the meeting tomorrow. All right, you explain I it. I can't! I can't! I can't! All right, why don't I admit it? It was witchcraft. Don't be idiotic, All Bill. right, I know it sounds idiotic. 
A week ago, I'd have laughed at it myself. But how else do you explain? Forrester, Aunt Helen, and now this. Well, I don't accept it. You don't have to. But I'm not going to risk my life, or yours, or Tracy's anymore. We should never have left her. We can't go back now. Apart from anything else, it would scare the life out of Tracy. Besides, she's got Amy with her. And we'll be back by tomorrow evening. Look, let's go on to London. And to put your mind at rest, you can phone her as soon as we get to the hotel. We had tea together and then she went up to bed. Yes. Oh, me? Oh, I've been doing all the odd jobs I never seem to get done when you're around. <laughs> How was the trip? What? Oh, uneventful. Sorry, this line isn't very clear. Did you drive all the way? I said, did you drive all the way yourself? Oh, good. Yes. Yes, I'll tell her. Well, she says she wants to go home tomorrow, so I'll probably drive her over. Right. Well, good luck for the meeting. Thanks for calling. Good night. Amy? Come in. Oh, you're still up. The old don't need much sleep, you know. Have you seen Amy? No, and I don't expect to. Isn't she in her room? No. to get to bed. Yes, I will, dear. Good night. Good night.
Amy?
Well, we're in business. You were just great with them. I thought once or twice we weren't going to pull it off. I never want another couple of hours like that. I'm going to ring Tracy. Right. Sure, but if Amy's in, she might know where Tracy is. Hello, darling. We've just got back. Look, Bill's worried because Tracy doesn't answer the phone. Do you know where she is? At your home. You're sure? You're sure she's there now, this afternoon? Yes. Bill, Amy says Trace is at home. You go on, I'll follow. Okay. Todd, you can't come in. You mustn't. Why? What's the matter? Please go, please. I'm we can talk about it later. I'm not going till I know what's wrong. Something's happened here, hasn't it? I don't know what you mean. Listen, Amy, I love you. That's the only thing that... Stop me. it, Dad! Leave me alone! I warned you not to come near Amy. Now, get out. I want to talk to Amy, and you've no right to interfere. I have every right to charge you with forcing your way into my home. Now, I'll give you one minute before I call the police. Very well. I'll call you later, Amy. He is back. What about the brother? Have you seen him? Yes. Vanessa will be angry. Vanessa? Yes. She is coming to us. You will see her tonight yourself. At the Sabbath. Tracy! 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 Yes? I'm Bill Lanier. Oh, Bill? I'll be out in just a moment. It would be better if you wait outside. What are you doing here? What happened? The doctor will tell you. Where's my wife? There hasn't been anyone here all day except Mrs. Lanier. Are you sure? Here, on us. How are you, Bill? Hello, Arthur. Close, sorry, but she'll be all right. Oh. What happened? Well, as far as I can make out, Melvina fell down the stairs sometime during in the night. When she came to, she managed to phone me and I brought the nurse. I just dropped by to see how she was coming along. How did she get to the stairs? Walked. 
Only way she could have. You see, there was never anything the matter with her legs, you know. Psychic trauma. After your grandfather's death, she had it fixed in her mind that she was only safe in her own room, sort of sanctuary. I can't imagine what changed her after all these years. Have you seen Tracy? I imagine she was with you. No, I'd have to hear. Look, Arthur, I've got to talk to Grandmother. Is that all right? Oh, yes, I think so, but don't overdo it. Uh, well, I've got to run along. I'll drop by after rounds. Yes, all right, thanks. Grandmother. Grandmother. Would you mind leaving us for a moment, please? Grandmother, where's Tracy? I... I saw her... Uh, the witch. Vanessa? Vanessa Whitlock. Helen was right. Where is Tracy? She, she wasn't burned. She, she, she came, came back. Tonight is rude mass. The witch's sabbat. Grandma, please, where has Tracy gone? Tracy. To the crypt. Oh, it's you. How did you get here? I took the shortcut back from Amy's and saw your light. What are you doing here? I can't find Tracy. Her grand says she came in here. Tracy? What on earth for? This is fresh candle grease. There's a tunnel behind here that leads to the walled-up part of the cellar in the house. Oh, yes, I remember hearing it was used as an escape route for priests. That's right, in the religious persecution. The family used to celebrate mass down there. They built a chapel. Now, this moves away from the wall, Todd, so give me a hand. Right when I say it. Ready? Right now. There's a fire down there. There's a boss.
been drugged. Cut the feet. Tracy. Tracy, darling. Tracy, wake up. It's me. It's Bill. Tracy. Tracy, wake up. Tracy, it's me, Bill. Walking. Turn around, You've got to wake up, Tracy. Please wake up. You're all right. You're all right. Only keep walking. Tracy, keep your eyes open. Come on. Tracy, wake up! It's all right, Tracy. It's all right. We're taking you home now. Tracy, why did you go into the crypt? I followed Amy. She's one of them. Bill? Yeah. 
He has led you away from the old religion. You have disobeyed our priestess. That's not true. I'm your servant. I respect and worship you. Alanya returns to die. No! We shall be ready. Born in evil, death in burning. 